Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in and welcome back to Sewing Clara. In today's tutorial, I will show you how I made this sectioned shirt. I recently designed the sewing pattern for sectioned shirts, both long sleeved and short sleeved versions. And I thought I could turn that into a short series for this channel. So I will show you how I make the different designs. And this is the one we're starting today with. So if that's something you're interested in, then please keep watching. The sewing pattern we are going to use today is a sewing pattern for basic sectioned shirts. This is a very versatile sewing pattern. It can be used for both a short sleeved and a long sleeved version. And in addition to that, you can choose whether you wanna make the back and front parts of the shirts of one piece or whether you wanna make them sectioned. The sewing pattern comes as a zip file with the sewing pattern in multiple sizes as PDF files and it comes also with this sewing pattern overview which contains a lot of useful information. So on the first page there is a list of the amounts of all the pattern parts that are necessary for whichever version you'll be making. Then we have here a picture that shows what the pattern parts look like and on the second page, there is information about the materials that are ideal for this project. There's the yardage and there's information about sizing. And we have here the sizing chart. Here we have some of the sewing pattern pieces. The sewing pattern accounts for seam allowance and the front parts and the back parts are always only pattern halves, so they need to be positioned on folded fabric, but all that is written on the pattern pieces. And if you wanna use this for the sectioned versions, you use the pieces separately, but if you wanna make, let's say, the front part of one whole piece, all you have to do is to align these pattern parts together. You just have to disregard the seam allowance where the pattern comes together. So you can either fold it together like so, or simply place it over each other. Just make sure that these lines are nicely aligned and same goes for the sleeves so for the short sleeve version you'll simply use only the short sleeve but if you choose to make a shirt with long sleeves you grab the pattern part for the bottom of the long sleeve and you align these two along these lines so this is a little bit rounded so i'm not gonna be folding it I'll simply place these pattern pieces over each other like so. I'll make sure that the lines are aligned and here we go. I have a pattern for a whole long sleeve. Here we have all pieces for our shirt. Let's start with the top row. So here on the top we have the back top part and the front top part. And these two pieces are for the lining. You don't necessarily need lining for this shirt but I personally like how it feels. I like having a little bit thicker layer on the top. Uh, another option would be to turn these two lining pieces into an integrated bra. For that, you would need an elastic band, which is over here. And then we have here the back bottom part, the front bottom part, and the sleeves. First, I will align the top pieces and I will pin the shoulders and the sides at an angle. And I will do the same with the pieces for the lining. I will make sure that the right side is inside. And now I will grab the sleeves and I will pin the sides together. Now, 
let's work on the bottom pieces. So I grabbed the front part and I made a little cut in the center so that it's easier for me to tell these two apart. I will also make sure that now the right side is facing up. I'll grab the back part. I will make sure that the wrong side is facing up and then I'll align the sides and pin them in place. Now all pieces are pinned together, so I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew everything together with stretchy overlock stitch. Now that everything has been sewn together, I will continue working on the top sections. So I'm gonna put away the sleeves and the bottom parts. I will turn this piece to the right side and I will pull over the piece, the lining, so that the wrong side is facing up. So basically when these pieces will be aligned together, the right sides are going to be together. And I will start pinning the parts together here around the neckline. Here is what it looks like once I pinned the two layers together around the neckline. I will go to my sewing machine and I will sew around the neckline with stretchy straight stitch. Now this is a step that is only necessary when you, like me, want to have two layers on the top sections. I personally like it, especially because I don't wear a bra. And if you turn this lining into an integrated bra, it's also a great solution, but it's not necessary. That's just my personal preference. You could work with just one layer and then you could skip this and the following step. But now let's go to the sewing machine and sew around the neckline. Here we have it. Now you have two options. You can either clip very close to the seam like so, or you can even cut out little triangles around the rounded edge so that once you turned the piece to the right side, the edge would be neat. Or my personal favorite is to save time and instead of clipping out these triangles, I like grabbing my zigzag scissors and I simply cut back the seam allowance pretty close to the edge. Which is for me personally one of the reasons why I love zigzag scissors. Now we're gonna turn the piece to the right side. And I'll be shaping the edge. I will make sure that the main fabric rolls a little bit over the lining, just ever so slightly. And I will be putting in pins at an angle because later I wanna sew around the edge. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can simply press and that would be it. But I personally like to have a seam around the edge. And this is what it looks like once I pinned the neckline in place. Again, you can skip this step and simply press. So I'll be sewing around the edge now again with stretchy straight stitch. And here is what it looks like. Now the next step can be either you can grab your sleeves and start pinning them in place and finish that part first. I personally like sewing uh, first the top with the bottom section. So I have here the bottom section, as I mentioned, I made a little mark in the center of the bottom section so that it would be easy for me to tell right away which side is the front. I turned it to the right side and then uh, I have to turn the front section to the wrong side. And I will pull it over the bottom section like so. I will align the side seams and then 
what I'm going to do further depends on what I want to achieve. If I would want an integrated bra, I would fold the lining upwards and then I would only have to pin together the top sections with the bottom sections. So I would do it like so from the inside and then I would get an elastic band and I would pin the elastic band around the edge of the lining to the right side like so. I would sew it in place and then I would simply fold the elastic band downwards and then I would have the support of the elastic band and this would serve me as an integrated bra. If you need more details about how to make an integrated bra on a top, I'll link down below my racerback tutorial because that's where I have shown it in detail. The second option is similar. So I would pin together the front section with the bottom section while the lining would be folded upwards. And once these would be sewn together, I'm, these are just pinned, but I'm gonna explain it like so. Once this would be sewn together, you could fold the seam upwards like so and then you could grab the lining and fold the bottom edge inwards and place it over this edge here. And then you could simply sew through with stretchy zigzag and that would look really nice from the inside. And the third option is the easiest, which is what I'm gonna do. I will simply align both layers of the top sections with the bottom section and I will pin all in place and I will sew these pieces together like they are. That's just the easiest and fastest solution. And here is what it looks like once everything is pinned in place. I like pinning from the inside and now I will go over to my sewing machine and I will sew this together with the overlock stitch, the stretchy overlock stitch. And this is what it looks from the right side. I think the best thing here is to simply fold the seam downwards and press. You don't have to sew through the edge at all unless you want to. And of course, you can go in and cut back the excess fabric if you, if you haven't been sewing exactly at the edge. I usually sew a little bit further from the edge, so I will have to do that. Now we're gonna turn our work to the wrong side and we will start pinning in the sleeves. So I will always place one sleeve in, like so. I will turn my work around. I will make sure that the front side is aligned with the front side of our shirt. I will nicely align here the seams of the top sections and I will start pinning the sleeves in at an angle. And since we have here again three layers of the fabric, the important thing is that all edges are aligned nicely. Now that both sleeves are pinned in place, I can go to my sewing machine and I will sew them in with stretchy overlock stitch. Before I turn our work to the right side, I will go ahead and chop off all these loose threads here. And I will also cut back the excess fabric. Here is what our shirt looks like from the wrong side. And this is the right side. The last step is to take care of these edges around the sleeves and on the bottom. And if you haven't been using lining, you will also have to fold in the edge around the neckline. 
So I'll be simply folding the edge of the sleeves and of the bottom inwards. I will make sure that it's folded exactly the same amount around the entire edge. You can clearly see that I'm putting the pins in from the right side because that's how I'm going to be sewing. I will be using my cover lock, but you can sew around the edge with stretchy zigzag. If you have not used lining for the top sections, you will end up with a raw edge here as well. So you can simply fold it inwards like so and pin it around the edge in place. Make sure that you shape it nicely. And before you do that, I highly recommend ironing on the edging iron on interfacing because that will prevent the neckline from stretching out too much. It will keep its shape much nicer. Here is an easy way how to make sure that the edge has been folded everywhere the same amount. I simply grab two places, fold them over my index fingers like so, and then I align them to make sure that they are equally big. And if necessary, I'll make the according adjustment. And when I start folding in the second sleeve, I start here where the seam is and I compare it with the first sleeve that has been pinned in place uh, to make sure that the amount I folded it is the same. I'll put in a pin and then I fold a little bit further on the side and again grab the first one as reference adjust the amount I'm folding it inwards and then I'll continue around the entire edge. And one last check I like to do before I sew in the edge of the sleeves. I like to fold the top here on the shoulders and aligning the sleeves and then folding them. And then I make sure that they are equally long because if they weren't, that would literally drive me insane. And everything looks good, so I can go ahead and sew around the edges. But before I do that, I will also fold inwards the bottom edge. So it's the same principle. I start here where I have the seams. I will put in a pin on one side. Then I'll go over to the other side. I'll fold it inwards and I'll compare it with this side first. And if I'm going to be happy with the result, I can go ahead and put in a pin and then I can continue pinning around the entire bottom edge. Here is what the bottom looks like once it has been pinned in place. You will notice that the way this top has been designed, the back is slightly rounded and a little bit longer than the front. That's because it just fits so much better and it looks so much nicer once you finish your shirt and when you have it on. So while folding the edge inwards, uh, you will notice that it's not going to be perfectly flat, but that's okay because when you'll be sewing, you can slightly, very lightly pull on the edge and then it will flatten. And now let's go to the sewing machine and finish these edges. Again, I'm going to be using my cover lock machine, but you can use stretches zigzag for all edges. And here is what it looks like when the sleeves have been edged. And here we have the bottom edge. One thing, and that's optional, I have folded here the seam downwards and I have sewn through also with a cover lock. So that's what it looks like on the inside. It's a little bit cleaner now. So that's how I made this shirt. I love section shirts because I find that they create of a really simple plain shirt something a little special. You can play a lot with different colors and patterns. And for me personally, that's very exciting. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. There will be three more tutorials for three other versions. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed yet. 
And uh, as I already mentioned, the sewing pattern is available on my homepage. Link is in the video description. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys very much. God bless you and see you with my next project. Bye.